Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him all. Hey, do you trust in Jesus? Do you trust him with your very life? That's a great, uh, great call to, uh, to us to have us answer that question. Uh, and uh, he, he, if we're singing that song, we are announcing that we do trust in Jesus. It's a sweet thing to be able to. We trust him with our lives, but then beyond our lives, to the grave and past the grave into eternity. Say with me, Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We have begun a series of studies in the book of James. So I hope that you have, if you're at a place that you can, you have your Bibles open and uh, you're thinking about uh, the book of James, and uh, and that you have been able to tune in to the uh, first two studies. We're, we're still in chapter one, trying to get as much as we can uh, from this, uh, this series. And uh, today, we want to continue on and look at uh, verses 9 through 11 and hope to gain some great insight there as well. Um, I, I guess I'm just going to call uh, this section, uh, for lack of a better term, that uh, life is short. So uh, there's, there's a lot more to it than, than just that. But one of the things that James brings up here is that, is that life is short. It's precarious. He brings that up uh, in another part of the epistle as well. But, but having that knowledge that life is short can help to... Uh, readjust our attitude and our perspective and help us to look upon the circumstances in life in a different way. Whether that be uh, that the circumstances are really, really good for me, I still, James says, I still need to realize that life is short. And likewise, if circumstances are not so good, that I need to realize that this too shall pass. Life is short. So it doesn't matter so much, you know, what I'm going through right at this second. Uh, I need to realize that life is short. There are other things coming. So let's get into the text and uh, take a look at it and uh, see what we can gain from uh, studies in James today. So I, I, I still think that you know, we need to think about the context of, of all this that we we began in uh, the first part of the chapter, uh, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Not that you look for trouble, but when you fall into trials, when when they fi- when trouble finds you, uh, there is a way to count it all joy. And we talked about the fact that uh, it can uh, produce these good results. Then we talked about uh, if we lack wisdom, we should ask for it. And as I said, I think that probably in the context, that would be wisdom as we're going through these troubles and trials. Some think that James just completely switches gears there and starts on another topic uh, about uh, the rich and the poor. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's probably rare when, when the writers of the New Testament uh, just completely uh, jump ship and start another topic uh, like that. I, I know it has to happen eventually, uh, but um, I, I think that uh, we should all, always also consider the fact that this is a continuation. So we've had uh, wisdom 
and we've had uh, uh, trials, and now we've got the rich and the poor. So uh, maybe these all kind of fit in that that same uh, discussion about how we handle the things of this life. But but look at what uh, what James has to say about the rich and the poor. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuit. So the, the lowly one is lifted up. The, the one who is high is brought down. So why does James bring that up? What's the advantage of us knowing that? Well, there, there's some good teaching here. Uh, and some things that we all need to remember. First of all, he says, let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation. So uh, let's say that I don't have a lot of this world's goods. There's still a way that I can be rich, even while I'm very poor in regard to this world's goods. Do you remember uh, a widow that Jesus brought attention to over in Mark chapter 12? Uh, beginning in verse 41. Uh, Over there in Mark chapter 12, it says, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrants. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more. Than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Now Jesus took that poor widow and exalted her, gave her, uh, though she was poor in this world's goods, he exalted her spiritually. And we will always remember, every time we read that account in Mark 12, we'll think about that poor widow. And do we think of her as poor? No, we think of her as rich because Jesus pointed her out and gave her praise. So the the one who is poor can take solace in knowing that it is possible for the poor to be exalted spiritually. They were even by Jesus. Then over in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, we also read where, where Peter talks about, he says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Oh, just look at that description. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. But he says there was a time when you were not a people at all. You were poor in in status, but God raised you up. He exalted you uh, because of your obedience and your belief in his son. So the poor in this world's goods, or even the poor uh, who were previously poor spiritually can be exalted spiritually by God. What a blessing that is. Um, Now I want to to go back over uh, and and look again at uh, James chapter 1 and uh, verse 10. We talked about the poor, but remember here he also brings up the rich. So he, he, he said in verse 9, that the lowly brother can glory in his exaltation, but the rich can glory in his humiliation. Now, I think all of us can relate to being able to glory when we are low and someone lifts us up. Uh, I've told several people about uh, a state farm agent that my wife and I had when we lived in Sarasota County, Florida. And uh, I'll never forget him. His name was Rick Coffey. And 
he he took us as a very young couple, young kids, not we didn't have any money. We had a few insurance policies. And so when we moved from Tampa down to Sarasota, he became our agent. He said, I want you to come in and we'll discuss your policies. I thought, boy, this won't take long. We're poor. We don't have any money. We don't, we don't have hardly any policies. You know, I guess we're going to be in and out of here. And he brought us in and he made us feel like we were the greatest customer that he ever had. He, he, you know, gave us bottles of water. He gave the kids little toys. He spent a long time going over our coverage and ways that even on our very meager budget, maybe we could have more. And he, he made us feel like we were really somebody. When we knew good and well, we were nobodies. We, we, were, we didn't have famous names, and we certainly didn't have any money. But he lifted us up. I think all of us enjoy that. But how can we look at the, uh, the admonition to glory as a rich person in humiliation? Well, that's just another part of the equation here if we're going to really appreciate what James has to say. In fact, later on in James, in James chapter 4 and verse 10, James says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So that rich man can glory when he is humble, when he humbles himself, because God is going to lift him up. Let's look at a couple other passages that help us to appreciate uh, the other side of the coin here. I don't think we have any problem appreciating uh, being lowly and being lifted up, but how about being uh, lofty and being brought down, that that's something to glory in? Well, in, in Job chapter 22 and verse 29, Job says, When they cast you down, or God says uh, concerning Job, When they cast you down and you say, exaltation will come, then he will save the humble person. So God takes special care of the one who humbles himself. Remember Job, uh, before all of these things beset him, he was the greatest of the people of the east and was wealthy, and yet he was brought low. But God will save the humble person. Over in um, Luke chapter 14 and in verse 11, in re- in, in, regarding the parable of taking the lowest seat, Jesus saw uh, the people trying to take the best seats, and he said that they should take the lower seat and let somebody bring them up to a more exalted position. And he finally sums that up in verse 11 by saying, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So uh, we need to realize that there's great value when I, am, uh, when I have been exalted in, in humbling myself, bringing myself low. Uh, in Luke chapter 18 and verse 14, as Jesus told the parable of the, the uh, Pharisee and the publican going to pray, how one was proud and the other one was humble. He says in regard to this, this humble Uh, a tax collector. In verse 13, the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's what God does for those who humble themselves. And finally, over in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 6 and 7, Peter says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So there's great value in realizing that uh, even being lifted up, we need to voluntarily humble ourselves. It's the humble that God really uh, uh, he appreciates. And he gives great uh, honor to when we humble ourselves. So let's, uh, let's remember that hard and fast fact. And then going back to uh, James chapter 1 and verse 11, let's remember as he, as he ends that little section, he says, 
Four, because, now remember, the, the, the lowly can rejoice and the rich can rejoice for their respective reasons, because no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flower falls, its beautiful appearance perishes, so the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. But guess what? The, the poor man will too. And so rich or poor, th- this too shall pass. But remember, you know, the, it's easy for a poor person to look around and say, oh, I wish I was rich. Remember, the rich man's going to pass away too. Uh, in fact, uh, just a couple passages real quick before we sign off here. Job chapter 14 Uh, Job says, a man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. Just like that flower, very quickly and life is over. James 4 and verse 14, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. A little time. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verses 18 and 19, the preacher says, Then I hated all my labor in which I toiled under the sun because I must leave it. Why must he leave it? Because he's going to die. I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. You see, it doesn't matter if we live to be 100 years old. In fact, there's a there's a fellow associated with the congregation here at Stone Ridge that uh, his mother just passed away, and she, she was around 101 years old, I think. And yet, that goes by so quickly, just like that. So quickly. Life is short, so don't get too caught up in the peaks, but don't get too caught up in the valleys. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you for this day and all the ways you've blessed us, and we are thankful for the study of your word. Thank you for the message that James gives us that there there is value in being poor, there's value in being rich, and we need to just have the right perspective in either way. As the Apostle Paul said that he had learned to be content in whatever state he was in. We ask you, Father, to be with all those that need you in a special way at this time and help us, whatever our lot in life, to humble ourselves that you would exalt us in due time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for thinking about these things for just a few moments. I hope they've been of benefit to you the way that they are me. Uh, There's been a lot that we've talked about already that I think should be of great importance to us, but there's a lot more to come. Be sure and remain a, a part of this study all through it. Uh, want to make a comment, want some clarification, have things to say, questions, leave a comment here on Facebook or YouTube, use Facebook Messenger, send an email to me personally at jdmundy3355 at gmail.com or to the church here at Stone Ridge Church of Christ at gmail.com, and we will be sure and get back with you. Uh, want to invite you to come and be a part of the services here at the Stone Ridge Church of Christ. We're at 514 Airport Road, and we meet Sundays at 10 a.m. with classes for all ages. Then we worship at 11 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. Wednesdays, we have classes for all ages at 7 p.m. And you're always invited. You would always be our honored guest. Hey, until next time, if the Lord allows us to live and he gives us another opportunity to study from his word, I hope that you have a great day and Rich or poor, wherever you find yourself today, see that there's value in that. Humble yourself and let God lift you up. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath a healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more.